starts right Hi, good morning. Welcome to GMSA at 9 at Fiesta. We're at the site of the Battle of Flowers Parade here at our KSET Insider Party. Uh, guys, I know it's a little loud, but the party is underway. This is the KSET Insider Party. Gates opened at 8 o'clock this morning. Everybody's lined up to get their tacos and their pins and taking part in all the festivities that are happening out here. And I tell you what, this is the best vibe going, step. It is awesome. You know, uh, if you guys are last minute people like me, there's actually still time Time to purchase some tickets online at kset.com to be a part of this awesome insider party. So we are right off the parade route. You'll probably see a little later on. We're off of Avenue E and 6, and but we're kind of like in the back behind the stands is what you're looking at right now. All right, so you guys are catching us at a good time here for the 9 a.m. show. AZ, and as you come back here, we want to show folks that we've been doing some homework stuff. We hold the microphone for them. I sure so will. here is the entire Battle of Flowers parade script in here and there's a note for every single entry even the pooper scoopers <laughs> yes one of the things we want to tell you entry number 35 if you're a fan of the big college bands the texas a m university fighting texas aggie band is entry number 35 today that's right and if you're an aggie or if you're not an aggie they are a wonderful band to march and if you're a longhorn that's tomorrow evening, <laughs> but today we are excited to have the UTSA band as well. That's right. All right, so we're going to have a blast out here today. The weather has cooperated so far. It's a bit on the humid side, but overall it's fantastic. We are starting to see some peaks of sunshine out here, but I'm feeling pretty good about the forecast today overall. I'm feeling good about it as well. I think we've been... Okay. We're getting lucky again this year with the weather as well. All right, so you guys want to know the rundown here. The Vanguard is scheduled to start at 8.55. We're expected to start our coverage um, any time now. So we're going to go up after this here and start getting ready for the actual Battle of Flowers Parade coverage, which begins a little bit later on right here on KSAT. Let's say starting around 9, 9.30. And then the 10 the is like we'll start seeing the Battle of Flowers float. So just stay tuned for us. We'll, we'll be on here. We'll keep you posted. And when you come out here, to the insider party uh, show us your fiesta flambeau i mean a uh, fiesta you know flowers and then also show us your shoes, us your shoes. yeah so. so come festive <laughs> max Alyssa, viva fiesta back to you in the studio all right mark steph thank you so much really appreciate it and thank you for starting your morning with us good morning if you're not Headed on over to Battle of Flowers. Don't worry, we're going to be streaming the whole thing. We're going to be checking in with Mark, Stephanie, the whole team out there. First Fiesta, how's it going so far? First Fiesta, it's going great. Very busy. I see there's a lot of moving parts, but there's a lot of fun to be had, a lot of people. So it's going pretty good so far. All right, so I was joking. Justin, they were stealing your thunder, pun intended. They were doing the whole weather forecast out there. <laughs> also, I think I may have wore the wrong shoes. Uh, just according to stuff there. They're definitely not festive, my shoes. I'm going to work on that. Uh, they're right. The weather is shaping up to be beautiful this morning. We have some clouds right now, maybe a little bit of fog, a lot of humidity. That probably goes away. We're going to get some sun midday, and then we'll watch for some storms this evening. We want to make everyone aware of that because there is a risk for some severe weather. So let's look at the headlines. Basically, what I just said here is that... Uh, the sun will reappear here soon after we get through some of these morning clouds. Battle of Flowers, a little more humidity, but nice. Severe storms likely this evening between 6 and 9 p.m. here in San Antonio. So that's the time frame we're watching. And right now, we're at 69. Dew point is at 66. It is humid with south-southwesterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Here's a look at the satellite picture with visibility, and you can see where the morning low clouds are and where some of the lower visibility is located right now. Gonzales down about half a mile. Pleasanton has actually improved when it comes to visibility, and really we're seeing most of the sites improving. Now it's mostly just these uh, low clouds, which are already trying to break up a little bit. Uh, Gonzales is the one spot where we're still seeing quite a bit of fog at this hour. So your case on 12 hour forecast, 80 degrees at noontime, still sunny, mostly sunny at three o'clock near 90, but then the storms start to kick in and this is going to happen rapidly. So you'll see isolated storms build in the hill country. And just like that, we'll get a line of storms that will race towards San Antonio. Again, in between that six and 9 PM time frame that you see there about a 70% chance of thunderstorms. And we have a pretty good risk of severe weather today. Hail and gusty winds are the main issues. We're going to talk a lot more about this and uh, get you set for tomorrow as well. Coming up here in just a few minutes. But now we'll toss it over to Stephen. And traffic's been beginning to pick up around downtown. Yeah, you know, and it's a lot of it is uh, there's no incidents to report in this particular area. Justin, let's get a look there at 10 at the Y. Notice right behind me, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown there in the eastbound lanes. That is likely because a lot of folks are trying to get there for the Battle of Flowers Parade. So remember to drive safe, but we can see a few 
few slowdowns are taking place for those that are trying to head out there this early in the morning. Now again, thankfully there were no issues to report in this particular spot from Transguide, but uh, it does look like there were still some issues that remain out on the roadway. Now we're going to start here. Overall look of the map is pretty good. Lots of green out there, but still some of that active construction to be on the lookout for. But that's not really something we're too concerned about because we know a lot of people are probably headed downtown anyways. But uh, do we watch out here 410 eastbound at Jackson Keller Road. There was a crash that was reported by TxDOT a little earlier this morning. Looks like that may have already cleared out, but we still have some res residual congestion through the area. So again, just watch out as you get the morning commute rolling. And again, 10 at the Y though, uh, we are seeing those slowdowns again in the eastbound lanes. Earlier, our friends at Transguide even showed us a shot there from 35 where folks were making their way up and exiting at McCullough. There was a little bit of a slowdown there as well. Again, that is because a lot of folks are headed for the Battle of Flowers Parade. So just remember to drive safe and Viva Fiesta San Antonio. Max Lissa. A reminder, since early voting for the city's general election is underway, polls are closed today. Today is a holiday for many city offices and schools. If you want to vote early, you can do so tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day of early voting, so you want to keep that in mind. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. on those days, Mondays and Monday and Tuesday. And you can find a list of polling locations on our website at ksat.com. Election day is Saturday, May 6. All right, as Steven said, Viva Fiesta, the streets oh, already yes. starting to get filled up with all these Fiesta fans. Of course, we have Battle of Flowers Parade. Oh, yeah, looking forward to it. Tiffany Huertas joins us live. Tiffany, you were, we know you're along the parade route. How are things looking out there besides you looking beautiful? <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. Good morning. It's electric. I'm telling you, it's so much fun, and we're right in the middle of everything. Just check it out. Thousands of people are filling downtown for the Battle of Flowers Parade. Right now, we're right in front of the KSAT Watch Party, and there is a high presence of law enforcement around. Over 9,000 participants will be part of this parade. The theme this year is the Battle of Flowers, where Fiesta reigns, and we had a, a lot of people from all over, including San Antonio residents who love the this event and good morning to you all. Tell us about what's your favorite part of this parade? Well, the, the floats and the girls on them and they're uh, showing their boots. I love it, yes. And the food and the drinks. The food and the drinks and you all look beautiful. Tell oh, me what's you. your favorite part? I like the floats also and the bands, the uh, high school bands. That's what it is, yes. That's and you've all been coming. Yeah, you've all been coming here for more than 30 years. Oh, yeah, 45, 45 years. 45, 45 years. years, amazing. Yes. And you came all the way from Las Vegas. Yes, I've been in Las Vegas for 23 years, and every fiesta, every April, I am here <laughs> with my family. Amazing, and that's what it's all about. And we can't forget you over here. Thank you. Tell me your name and um, how, how, how do you love this event? My name is Jim Gonzalez. I love coming here. I love the floats. One of my favorite things here is Cascarones. <laughs> <laughs> Viva Fiesta! <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Lots of energy, so much fun. It's a family fun event. And of course, look at the beautiful people with all the beautiful outfits, the smiles. This is going to be an electric event. Stay with us on KSAT. And of course, show us your shoes. Look at mine. <laughs> nice, those pair of boots. We'll send them Love back to it. you. <laughs> wow, those are fantastic. Tiffany, we're at the set in the bar so high this morning. Thank you, Tiff. All right, so obviously, if you're not able to make it out to the Battle of Flowers Parade today, don't worry. You can watch it live right here on KSAT from the comfort of your own home. Once our parade coverage begins, we're going to toss things back on over to Mark and Steph. They're going to be broadcasting the parade for you. You saw Mark with his big binder of notes. They're going to be talking about all of the floats out there. You can watch it on air or on any of our digital platforms. And then after the parade, don't go anywhere because... We have Mike Osterhage, SA Live, Battle of Flowers After Party. I know Mike's excited about it. I'm excited about it. This is the place to be, you all. And because we will be broadcasting the Battle of Flowers Parade, here are some programming changes to be aware of. Live with Kelly and Mark will re-air the early morning hours of Monday, May 1st. And The View will re-air tomorrow at 3 a.m. All right, but for now, it is 9.07. It is about 68 degrees out.
So much more still ahead on GMSA at 9, including more of our Fiesta coverage as we get ready for the Battle of Flowers Parade. It's hard to believe Fiesta wraps up on Sunday, especially looking at that chicken right there on the screen. And it's, you know, it's been going pretty fast. I could knock down like six chickens on a stick right now. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I'm so excited to get out there. Hopefully the food will be ready by the time we make it out there. Oh, yes, absolutely. While we wait for the Battle of Flowers Parade coverage to begin, we're going to talk a little sports. David Sears and, well, RJ Marquez, he'll actually be here. He'll be joining Max. They'll be getting a chance to talk sports round one of the NFL draft and how they think the Cowboys and the Texans did with their first picks. We'll be right back. Your 2023 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, everybody. I'm Ray Fayo, 74, Larry Kurt, the Ugly King, and I look forward to seeing all of you at Fiesta this year. Meet Larry Kurt, 2023's The Ugly King, El Ray Fayo. Witty and contagiously full of life, Larry is geared up and ready to take on the iconic role as the People's King for this year's festivities. But he's no stranger to the Fiesta scene. I started in 1989 as a volunteer. My daughter has been the opportunity to be La Reina. I've held many positions with the Fiesta Commission, including the president. And this year, 2023, it culminates with me getting the opportunity to be the 2023 Ray Feo. The fun comes with the territory in being Fiesta royalty, but the underlying mission of serving as El Ray Feo, not lost on Larry Kirk. Being Ray Feo is the best opportunity to volunteer and raise funds for scholarships for worthy students in San Antonio and Bear County. I have 12 court members who helped me to raise funds along with the Dos Reyes, Dos Amigos initiative to raise over $500,000 for scholarships this year for worthy students. Every Ray Feo gets the opportunity to design portions of the traditional outfit, including their crown and cape. And this year's designs commemorate some of the most historic symbols of San Antonio. So my crown displays each of the important missions in San Antonio. We also have the San Antonio River displayed by these blue stones. We have a cactus for the Payaya Indians who founded San Antonio. We also have a canary for our Canary Islanders and a symbol of Juneteenth from the Juneteenth flag. Broidered at the bottom of the cape are each of the very important missiones of San Antonio. Larry is ready for Fiesta Fun and has a message for all of his fans. San Antonio loves Fiesta and the Ray Feo loves San Antonio. All right, it really is a party with a purpose. Like you heard him say, half a million dollars raised for scholarships. And taking a live look out here, I mean, this is Beautiful. the parade route. This is so cool. So. Justin and I were talking about our first fiestas. You know, is this kind of just like a jarring experience? Like, you know, it, it is so far. I, like I said, I see all the different parts that go into it. I can see all the appreciation everyone has for San Antonio's culture and background, and it's yeah. really nice. It is. And it's party yeah. with a purpose. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be especially nice if we can make it through the parade without rain. Yeah. Well, last year it was going to be hard to beat because we got great weather. This year, it's shaping up to be pretty good. The, the weather this morning is good. We are going to watch for some storms, though, this afternoon. So I know we have some fiesta events going on later today. You want to be weather aware. I can't stress that enough. Uh, let's first start with what's going on outside. We've got cloudy skies, mostly cloudy skies. Sun's trying to shine through 69 at the airport. Dew point is at 66. And we've got a south southwesterly wind at about 11 miles per hour. Dew points. That's kind of the big story overnight. We went from having fairly dry air to now having very humid air in place. And so the humidity levels are going to be high this morning. You will feel that. But luckily, temperatures aren't going to be overly warm during Battle of Flowers. Uh, we have had some issues with fog here and there, but most of that is beginning to lift. Gonzales is the, still the, the one spot where uh, fog is still fairly thick. Otherwise, uh, the fog is lifted in most places. Here's a look at today's timeline and we'll lose some of the clouds as we head towards mid morning. So give it a while longer and those clouds will begin to break up. So Battle of Flowers looks good. Uh, 80 degrees at noontime. So we'll spend most of the parade in the 70s. 89 by 4 o'clock. That's our high temperature and it's going to be steamy, but very quickly around 5 o'clock into 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock. We're going to see storms flare up. This is all going to be happening at a quick rate. 
and uh, we'll have the possibility, uh, actually a pretty high likelihood of some severe storms. The good news here is the window is small uh, for these storms. They'll move in and move out. But uh, when storms get to be uh, moving fast like that, we've got to be concerned about not only hail, but some gusty winds too. Here's the current setup. There's the front and it's moving fast. It'll move towards the I, uh, I-35 corridor by this afternoon and storms will quickly develop right out ahead of that front. Initially up across the Metroplex, but down further south along the front, I think about uh, again, four or five o'clock is when we'll start to see things flaring up in the hill country. The risk for severe weather is quite a broad area. So we're talking from the Metroplex all the way down to San Antonio. And the Storm Prediction Center actually extended this all the way further south to include basically our entire viewing area within the risk for numerous severe storms. So think of it on a scale of one to five, it's a three. And that's a pretty elevated risk for us. So that's why we need to be careful tonight. Here's a look at the forecast. We'll fast forward to four o'clock. We're still probably looking at sunny skies here in San Antonio, but this model is now showing one storm flaring up there between Del Rio and Eagle Pass. If we were to get a storm out west, this would quickly become severe and it would be something we would need to watch closely. Then you'll start to see these storms uh, developing across the hill country around five o'clock and watch how quickly these storms just kind of flare up. This is 6 p.m. And then by 7 p.m., we've got probably quite a bit of severe weather along a broken line of storms. And that'll be pushing through San Antonio, I'd say six to seven o'clock. So that's when we have that 60 to 70% chance of storms. But watch how quickly this moves away. So this model has sped up just a little bit. So now by nine o'clock, it's pretty much out of here. And by 10 p.m., it's already moving out of our eastern counties. And midnight, things have quieted down other than a few light showers in the wake of that. By tomorrow morning, clear skies, but gusty winds, and it will be a little bit cooler. Uh, and that'll be the case most of Saturday. So the storm threats today, again, here in San Antonio, between 6 and 9 o'clock, hail and gusty winds are what we're going to be watching for very, very closely. I'd say they are about equal when it comes to the risk of what we may see. Uh, the wind gust forecast non thunderstorm winds is what we're talking about here in the case of Saturday morning. We could see gusts up to 40 miles per hour uh, behind that storm system. So it'll be windy for the first half of your Saturday. The winds will subside by the time we get to Fiesta Flambeau, 72 at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, and by 11 p.m. when the parade is winding down in the 50s. So it could be a little bit chilly. You may want to take a light jacket with you to Fiesta Flambeau. 75 tomorrow, 84 Sunday and sunny, but we start off at 51. And then uh, pretty nice weather next week, but highs in the mid-80s. So bring a jacket just in case you plan to stay out a little late tonight. Yeah, bring a jacket and just be prepared for the storms. And then also have a jacket, I would say, tomorrow night uh, for Flambeau because it may get a little cool there towards the end. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for that update, mm -hmm. Justin. Right now, your time is 918, 70 degrees outside. All right, so as we were saying earlier this morning, we read sports at 430 this morning. You might have missed the draft last night, but don't worry. RJ and David are here. We are talking about the Texans, number two and number three overall, revamping. C.J. Stroud saying he wants wins on wins on wins. David Sears, how are we feeling? I'm feeling good, how are you? Feeling great. Great. We'll check in with David and RJ in just a second. Pro football coverage. Powered by David Good morning and welcome back. So yes, we're in the midst of Fiesta, but we also had the NFL draft last night. We had the first round, the Houston Texans pulling off a couple surprising moves. The Cowboys. They're the Cowboys, and a kid stole the show. David and RJ are here to wrap up the first round and tell us what this all means. And they're already in deep talking, yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, this is very the, far uh, the talk right. of the Texans. Uh, a lot of hot <laughs> takes going on here. It was a fiesta <laughs> in Kansas City last night. They had their I own did. little yeah, party Yeah, it looked like on. a great yeah. time out yeah. there for the Chiefs fans and all the other fans yeah. that made it out there uh, for this NFL draft. And David, you mentioned here the Texans uh, not, not wasting any time no. making moves here. They went right after it. I think they had the best first round of of any team because they needed more help than most teams mm -hmm. and boy did they get it cj stroud was their second pick and you know they were keeping it very very secret on what they were doing and everybody thought they were going to go defense with their first pick but they picked up this i mean how do you pass him up with number two bryce young went number one so you need a quarterback they got a quarterback and then they made some trades yeah, and got rid of some move picks here. and yeah. boom. Big move here, of course, the Texans came in. They had a lot of capital from previous trades, the Deshaun Watson trade. So they're able to move back up to number three. So they basically selected back to back. I like the C.J. Stroud pick uh, and you're right. They kept that very close to the vest yep. there. So Will with number Anderson three, they took uh, one of your guys there, Will Anderson Jr. Jr. from, yes. from, from Alabama. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Texans of the uh, SEC. 
Alabama. <laughs> I mean, they, it's like they all, all the Alabama guys go. So they got that, so they got that young man. So mm-hmm. they, are, they are rolling. And I know, you know, some teams were able to just, you know, I guess improve their team a little bit, but this team needed a whole lot. The Texans had all, all sorts of holes, yeah. And they gave they away some picks, but, you yeah. know, some people say they paid too much for, for moving up to three, but I don't think so. Uh, they gave away a number one mm-hmm. next year, but they still had a number one. So they, they had two number ones, so they could they could afford to give away a number one. They still have one, so they're okay. It's not like they gave them all away like, uh, what's his face? Did, wasn't <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, so, I do like the aggressiveness, yeah. and especially there. Will Anderson Jr., I mean, very productive there from Alabama. Definitely going to help that defense out pretty soon here. So here's what they got left. Around. Round three, a couple. Round four, one. Round five, they mm-hmm. got one. Round six, they got three. So see, they still got a plethora still of got, picks. Yeah. Round seven, they got, got a couple. To go here. They're going to be busy over the next uh, next couple of days. All right, the Cowboys. Yes. What the Cowboys do? They sat right there and they made a, I would say, a very good pick because if you remember last year and even mm-hmm. the year before, what mm-hmm. was the biggest problem they had on defense? Well, hey, it could have been uh, run defense. Ah, there for sure. yes, that's why they got yeah. that guy right there, so um, he can help. Uh, of course, they thought he's going to be a pretty good pass rusher too. But he, uh, I think they got him more for helping them stop the run. And yeah, that was David, their big first defensive tackle that the Cowboys have selected in the first round since Russell Maryland back in 1991. Mm. If you could believe this, uh, yeah. yeah, Mozzie Smith there from Michigan. Um, I, I was surprised. I thought they were going to go tight end. I thought maybe they may move out of the first round, maybe try and get some more picks here. But uh, this one kind of surprised me. But the Dallas has a, lot of a pretty people, good track record here yeah, drafting no, some so guys lately. I like to pick, though, because, I mean, that was, that was one of their Achilles heels last year. Mm-hmm. They couldn't stop anybody running up the middle. So hopefully he can, uh, he can plug up some few holes in there and, and help them out. So here's what they have left today. Basic round two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> just one pick in each round. So nothing very exciting. Yeah. Hey, how yeah, about uh, how about the University of Texas and Bijan? Woo, okay. We were wondering if the Cowboys maybe uh, make some moves up to get Bijan top 10. He ends up being drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. Interesting move here. Yeah. You know, they say you should never take running backs down in the top 10, but obviously he kind of fit the mold here of someone that's going to be an explosive star there for Atlanta. They, the Falcons think he is a complete game changer, mm-hmm. not just a running back. He's also can play receiver, and so they were they were banking on him being a, a, a game changer for him. So Texas is looking pretty good today. All right, so mm-hmm. the highlight of the draft. Here's the, here's the top. Let's start with the top 10 first. Here's your, here's your top 10 picks. So you go Bryce Young, one, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, Andy Richardson, Devon Witherspoon, and oh, by the way, Texas Tech had a top 10. Oh, you had to mention Boom. that there. Number yes. seven, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Number <we> seven <laughs> went, uh, went ahead Tyree of the Wilson, Texas yes. player uh, but then, who went to Atlanta. Uh, Max's, uh, Max's Eagles there getting Jalen Carter. Mm, a lot of people yep. said that he was the number one overall prospect. I see Alyssa there doing the uh, Fly, Eagles fly. <laughs> yeah. fly, Eagles fly. So I- interesting moves there by the Eagles defending NFC champs. The Jets did not have a top 10, but the guy who got to read the pick is definitely in the top 10. I'd like all of you to join me in cheering on Kyle as his wish comes true. The floor is yours, Kyle. With the 15th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 select Will McDonald, linebacker, Iowa State. Let's go! Yeah! Red <laughs> Todd. <laughs> okay, so you got that was no, yeah, that was it, man. That was, that, that, was that, was the, that was the moment of the entire first round last night. So, <laughs> so the guy who gets picked has the memory of this kid doing all that, and this kid gets the memory well, of, of actually. I mean, now making he's got to be pick, a Pro Bowl so. player after this right yeah. here. <laughs> Kyle uh, Stickles yeah. is his name. 13 years old. Mm-hmm. He was diagnosed with bone cancer at age 11, and his make a wish was he wanted to be able to read the pick for the Jets. He got to go to the Jets facility before they took him out to Kansas City to to do that. So that's awesome, man. That kid was awesome last night. Yeah, great moment there. And uh, you know what? We're going to have some more great moments here coming up. Uh, You know, we have the uh, draft continuing tonight here in case at 12, starting at 6 o'clock, the second and third rounds. And maybe we'll get some of those San Antonio guys we mentioned. They can get get picked here later on. Uh, Jalen Jones, Ben Sims. So hopefully we'll hear some of those names come up. All right. So there you go. Mm. J-E-T-S, Jets. A lot of excitement. Like that kid's nowadays. energy was infectious. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was infectious. I know. If we weren't fired up already, <laughs> right. got us, got us hey, Patrick Mahomes even tweeted out how nice. fired he was. How fired up he was after yeah. he saw that kid. So, <laughs> Good there stuff. you go. Yeah.
RJ, David, thank you all so much. Right now, your time is 928 and it's 70 degrees outside. All right, let's take a live look. Oh, this is perfect. This is one of my favorite parts, the food. Yes. I mean, Battle of Flowers, getting going. The insider party looks awesome. Look, they're on live TV. Love the crowns. We're going to check in with all of our friends out and about in just a few moments. All right, welcome back everyone and happy Fiesta Friday. Tiffany Huertas is about to join us live right now from the parade route. Tiffany's gonna break it all down, giving us the vibe. Is it flower power? What, it, what, it, what is it giving, Tiffany? <laughs> 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 yes, it's giving flower power, of course. I feel this is so much fun. Now, 9,000 participants this morning. We're going to see bands. We're going to see different floats. But of course, we can't forget about the food. We showed you a little bit during the break, but this is the tacos. We got the famous chicken on a stick. And we have two women here that are having so much fun. We have Diane and Patty. Good morning to both of you. Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. <laughs> Talk to us about what's your favorite part about this parade? Well, I love seeing the families together. Everybody's so happy. The kids are happy. The parade is so fun. And just seeing the school bands and everything, how hard they work, and seeing them out there on the streets. Oh, and the drinks, and the free drinks. Oh, so much fun. And tell me, you got the, is this your first chicken on the stick of the day? For the day, yes. Okay. Isn't it beautiful? Hey. It's so beautiful. <laughs> You're going to see this. This is the energy you're going to catch. And right now we're at the KSAT watch party. Lots of fun. Don't miss. We're going to be streaming live and we're going to be giving you all of this coming up and we'll send it back to you for now. Well, Tiffany, let me tell you, I saw her almost take a bite of that chicken. If it was me, I think I would have done it. OK. <laughs> yeah. Well, they ran away. Look, they're already gone. They're gone. They're having they're fun they're to enjoy the chicken. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> And again, we will be broadcasting the parade on air. Once our parade coverage begins, we will toss things over to Mark and Stephanie, who will be hosting the parade for you. You can watch it on air and on any of our digital platforms. And after the parade is over, stay tuned for our SA Live Battle of Flowers after party. All right, so let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City right now. 70 degrees. Justin, are we going to see some sunshine come through? We are. We are. It's already starting to happen. So these clouds will break up some. It's going to be kind of warm for Battle of the Flowers, but not too bad. And humid, too. And we have to remind everyone that there is that chance for severe storms this afternoon. So real quick, we're going to get through the forecast, and uh, that parade's going to get started uh, here pretty quick. So we want to let you know what we're expecting today. 69 degrees and cloudy right now. Dew point is at 66. And the cloud cover, yeah, it's starting to shrink a little bit. So we're seeing less in the way of clouds. And this whole area of low cloudiness will really, I think, go away here over the next couple of hours, and you'll see more sun. Uh, temperatures are already jumping into the 70s where the sun is out. Kerrville, 71, 70 in Fredericksburg, and around Bear County, we're right at that 70 degree mark. So our forecast today, we'll see a little bit of cloud cover around 10 o'clock, but by noon, mostly sunny and 80. 89 by 4 o'clock, sunny and humid. But then as we get into that 6 to 9 p.m. time frame, that's when we're going to watch for the uh, possibility of some strong to severe storms as a line of storms makes its way into town. So we got to be uh, careful because I think there could be some hail and gusty winds involved. Here's why. We've got a frontal boundary that is diving south. This is pushing southeast at a pretty quick clip. So by the time it makes it to I-35, that's when the storms start to develop. This is around 4 o'clock today. And it's right along that front where we have a pretty high risk of some strong to severe storms. We're in the numerous category. And uh, that risk uh, is on a scale of 1 to 5, about a 3. So that's what we're going to watch this afternoon. We'll be here for you. You can go to the web. We'll also keep you updated on the KSAT weather app all day long. Wonderful. All right. Wonderful. Justin yes. Horn, thank you so much. So, as we've been talking about throughout the morning, Battle of Flowers Parade, it is just about to start, so we're going to head to break, and then once we come back, you'll have the parade. The 2023 Battle of Flowers Parade is powered by HEB. Hundreds of hours of preparation. The city of San Antonio is ready. Viva Fiesta, San Antonio. It is time for this year's Battle of Flowers Parade. And a good morning to you. I'm Mark Austin. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks so much for joining us today. The Vanguard is already underway. And right behind us, we have TMI. That's right. Texas Military Institute, the Keepers of Tradition. They were founded 128 years ago, and they've been in every Battle of Flowers Parade 
every year it has existed. A sharp looking group from the junior ROTC out there at TMI Episcopal on San Antonio's northwest side. That's right. Just some history in 1897, General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur, graduated top of his class. That's right. And now we're moving on to the next group. The Vanguard is mostly, uh, of course, this is Military City USA. That is our, our well-known, incredible nickname. And so you're going to see a ton of junior ROTC units. And the next one up is from Luther Burbank High School, the Bulldog Battalion, Steph. That's right. So we have the coordinator, First Sergeant Paul Russell with the Army ROT instructor. All right, so it was 1937, the only school in San Antonio to offer an ag pro program. 1938, they formed their ROTC Cadet Corps, and it was formed under the FFA. So definitely the ag connection there. Next up, yes. we've got Central, Central Catholic. Catholic High School. That's right. Central Catholic High School joins us, and we are very familiar with Central Catholic because they are right across the street from us, and there they are marching in right in the vanguard you can kind of hear them behind us right now there are the central catholic high school corps of cadets it's a large group of future military leaders and you see the alpha bravo and charlie company flags there at the very beginning they're going to have a long walk today but they are looking forward to it. it's an exciting yeah. day here in san antonio if you're not from here by the way the city pretty much shut down for this Friday, every single year, the party with a purpose continues, and it is a giant party. I can't even remember the crowd estimates for how many people usually line up pre- or post-pandemic step for the Battle of Flowers. I know it's a lot. It's, it's a large crowd. I, I feel like we've gotten back to where we were, and maybe even more people, especially kind of here around us. And... Uh, is that Central Catholic? The Central Catholic is still moving through. They are. There's a huge group here. And what you're also going to see is uh, different branches of the military represented in these junior ROTC programs. You've been seeing a couple of Army ROTC, junior ROTC programs. Now you're seeing Air Force uh, junior ROTC cadets marching on by. I, I tell you what, to be honest with you, the logistics of this are, are massive. So uh, keeping everybody in order. And, and, and according to scripts, is, is a challenge every single year. Yes, they're the first all-boys Catholic high school in San Antonio. And just a note, Master Sergeant, retired Master Sergeant Alexander Chavez is a coordinator for Central Catholic. Okay, so we're moving on here. We've got a bunch of other ones here, and they're all mixed together. And the, one of the ones I'm seeing here, Steph, is East Central High School. And I'm not seeing uh, a script for them here. Oh, yeah. there it is, yeah, okay. Uh, so the, the coordinator, we have Lieutenant Colonel Terry Duran, the Army instructor, and this is for, they have been in the Battle of Flowers Parade for 50 years. So another long time contributor uh, there for the Battle of Flowers Parade. So Steph, if you keep kind of track on where we are, I know Harlandale is getting ready to come up too. They yes. have a huge and banner on what the can't miss Harlandale High School, uh, Burgundy and Gold. Yes, and right, we uh, Edison High School just passed by. There is Harlandale. Harlandale yeah. High School coming through right now. Yeah, they they are been in the Battle for Aid for Battle Fire Spray for another one for a long time, 50, for 50 years. years. Yes, an honor unit with distinction. And yes, uh, they were established in 1966. They are celebrating 57 years at Harlandale, and of course, Harlandale High School has been educating students since 1896. Now, not all these kids are going to go on to military careers, but a lot of them look for structure and unity in a, a military organization in high school and it's a great part of that high school experience. So this is a group from Harlandale High School here in San Antonio. Coming up also, we've got Highlands High School, whole bunch of schools from districts around San Antonio represented here today, Steph. That's right, they're marching right behind and it's cool to see the crowd get excited for the kids as well. You know, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication to be a part of the ROTC program. So it's nice that the parents get to see their kids walking down. And there are support teams of parents and the uh, the cadre of, of retired uh, NCOs and officers that lead these units throughout San Antonio. Here comes Highlands High School yes. right now. And a couple of them have uh, rifle teams as well. Some have sabers, of course, the flags, the pomp, the circumstance, and of course, the, the, the telltale yes. berets that we're seeing there for Highlands High School. Very decorated group. They've been in the Battle of Flowers for 40, more than 40 years. So this is the Junior ROTC orienting, orienting team learning how to create maps in support of JROTC STEM curriculum. That's actually a competition 
uh, for Junior ROTC. It's called Orienteering, and it's a very cool thing. And it's all about uh, old school maps and compasses and finding your way as a team to win the competition. It's impressive. Very cool. Sam Houston High School is next up here. They are led by First Sergeant Donald R. Halford, an Army instructor. They have been in the Battle of Flowers Parade 40 years, and I think you're picking up on a theme here if you're watching this parade for the very first time, and that is this parade has been a long-time tradition here in the Alamo City. That's right. They have been a part of this parade for a very long time. An Army Gold Star Honor Unit with distinction. They are the Army's highest program rating. This is for Sam Houston, competed in the National Junior ROTC Championship in Daytona, Florida. So congrats. They're also a major contributor to the community with over 2,000 service hours. Also impressive. On the way now, Thomas Jefferson. And we've got a little bit of a gap here, so we want to kind of set the scene. Normally, this parade goes down one of the main streets in San Antonio, Broadway, but as our city grows by leaps and bounds, ton of construction, second year in a row, the route is a little different this year. Uh, we are stationed at the corner of Avenue E and 6th Street. I can see the Tower of the Americas, the downtown town hotels to our left, and a lot of the new construction on Broadway to our right, but we've been here since <laughs> how early this About morning? About six or b before six. We were here for the parade before the parade when the floats are making their way down to get into position. Right. And uh, as we're waiting for this next group to come by, there is uh, there Thomas Jefferson High School. People been lining up since well before sunrise to get a seat. One of those coveted seats right there. They were setting up chairs behind us as we were this morning. You're taking a look at the Crimson Brigade unarmed drill team right now. They are an armed and then also Crimson Guard armed drill team as well. Let's watch for just a second. Forward march for Jefferson High School's unarmed and armed but, uh, drill teams. Yes, they've been in the parade for 88 years. Very impressive. The ROTC program continues to maintain the highest national unit award, honor unit with distinction, gold star. Crimson Brigade and Crimson Guard drill teams competed in the all-service national championship at Daytona Beach, and they are currently ranked number two in the nation. Now we have Lanier. Looking at Sydney L Lanier, the junior ROTC. The Vokes Battalion. What is a Voke? It's like a giant cog. Yes. Uh, it's one of the more unusual uh, mascots here in the San Antonio. You've got the Central Catholic Buttons and the Lanier Vokes. The coordinator of Lanier's JROTC unit is Lieutenant Colonel Santiago Bueno, a senior Army instructor. He actually used to lead the Corps of Cadets out at TMI, and oh, now he's running Lanier's. Small world. Yes. And you know, Lanier, also impressive, has been in the Battle of Flowers Parade for over 54 years. Very impressive. So in 1938, Junior ROTC was established at Lanier High School. One of the 11 schools in the nation selected a Jose Army Junior ROTC Cyber Program in the 2022-23 year. Next up, we've got the McCollum High School JROTC Cowboys from McCollum High School. That's right. We have our coordinator, who is Lieutenant Colonel, retired, Charles Burton, and then over 60 cadets from the Cowboy Battalion there. They've been in the Battle of Flowers for 19 years. The high school was founded in September of 1962. They received an honor unit with distinction during the latest JROTC program accredita accreditation process. I'll spit it out eventually. Eventually. <laughs> Same here. Community service is a hallmark of the program there. This year, the entire junior ROTC partnered with the local VFW to help feed the hungry. All right, more groups here. And I trust me, uh, for every one of these kids, it's a different experience that they will never forget. This is Pleasanton High School, one of the suburbs of San Antonio. Their coordinator is Colonel Retired Chris Winder and Command Sergeant Major Retired E.J. Newells. These junior ROTC cadets are led by Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Krista Gutierrez and Cadet Command Sergeant Major Valdemar Adetta. Now, this is only their second year in the Battle of Flowers Parade. That's right. The program was established in 2011, and it also includes Pleasanton, Jordanton, and Poteet High Schools. This battalion is an honor unit with distinction with 118 cadets currently enrolled. 
Last year, a highlight was participating in the Army Nationals Drill tra Championship for the first time in school history. And I missed who that is right there, if I, I can ask our production Summer team. Somerset. Is that Somerset? Must Somerset passing through. Yep. Okay. And now looking at South. Yes, that's Somerset High School. They're led by Chief Warrant Officer for Tabitha Williams. They have about 196 cadets in their program at Somerset High School. Then we jump down to Southside. Yes, Southside High School. So their Master Sergeant, Antonio Arujo. And he is the ROTC instructor there. This is their fifth year in the parade. And they're an Air Force Junior ROTC unit. Of course, a huge Army presence here, also Navy Marine Corps. And then, of course, several Air Force bases. And San Antonio is the home to uh, basic training for the entire United States Air Force down at JBSA Lackland on San Antonio's southwest side. And uh, another huge part of Military City USA. We have Southwest High School, the Navy Junior ROTC Sea Dragon Southwest High School there. So the coordinator, Lieutenant Commander Sean Wilson, who is U.S. Navy retired. Now they are the Black Knights Armed Exhibition Drill Team. This is their sixth year in the Battle of Flowers Parade for Southwest. That's right. And they are celebrating their 38th anniversary as a Junior ROTC unit. They were established in 1985. Again, we've had a bunch of Army, a bunch of Air Force. Nice to see the Navy is represented there from Southwest High School's Navy JROTC Sea Dragons unit. A lot of folks out here enjoying the day, taking the Aww. day off, soaking up the uh, parades here. It's been a long week of parades here. It's San Antonio Fiesta yes. activities. And we've got another one coming up tomorrow night. Tomorrow. And we've been lucky with the bigger parades. You know, uh, we had the the River Parade on Monday. The weather worked out. And we had the Battle of the Flowers Band Festival last night. Had a good crowd and everything worked out there at Alamo Stadium. And here's the street that we're on this year. If, you, if you're if you an avid viewer and you watch uh, KSET a lot, we were at a different location. We were off of Main Street last year. So now we are off of Avenue E and 6th Street. And the crowd is, there's a little break here, so the crowd is waiting for more of the Vanguard. Perfect to pass time by. for us to check in with our very own Sarah Costa. Sarah, where are you? Hey, Mark. I'm on the street. I have a really good crowd. Viva Viva! Yeah! y'all this crowd is wild they are ready to go this guy is dancing lots of confetti lots of silly string and this is why i love this parade so much this it's this crowd right here how, how is this the spot that you like to be on every right year right here. every year baby every year, every year representing <laughs> what makes this parade so special to you guys family and all kids and take the time and dedication to come in and march this parade and we all are all family and everybody's just having a great time i'm so excited for everyone you can see the energy is just so palpable i'm going to send it back to you mark and staff and i'm going to be in the crowd just having a great time good luck down there sarah costa thank you very much yes have fun and somebody else having fun out there our jonathan goto since early this morning he joined us live jonathan that's right Mark, Stephanie, we're here at the KSAT watch party where the music is sounding off, the food is on full display, and let me tell you, folks with the dance moves, everyone here is having a good time. Viva Fiesta! How's it going, ma'am? Great! We, we love you guys, we love KSAT 12, and we're so happy you are having this for us again. Well, so happy to have you, and I hope you have a good time. Viva Fiesta! Viva Fiesta! Once again, folks, here there's plenty of food, mini <laughs> funnel cake, all kinds of the moves. Man, you got the move and going dancing. on. <laughs> this is a little bit of the fun that's taking place here at the case at Yay. All right. I love I'm it. Go with your flow. There you go. Have you fun. Got it. Have fun. All right. Out there, We're going to have fun out here and we'll send it back to you for now. Jonathan, thank you very much. All right. So, back here at Battle of Flowers, we're waiting for a few more JROTC units. Yes. And then we've got, the, we've got the floats and things like that. This is uh, Wagner. Wagner High School, the Thunderbird Battalion. 
And uh, they are led by Chief Warrant Officer 3 retired Michael Good. That's right. And this is their fifth year in the Battle of Flowers Parade. Uh, now, Lieutenant Colonel Kara Wagner, of whom they are named after, was a 1979 graduate of Judson High School at Converse outside San Antonio. She was actually killed on the pen in the Pentagon on 9-11. She was a medic and from the Converse community. That's right, and these kids are representing her well today. They are four-time national armed and unarmed drill teams here. They're also, just an interesting note, alumni of this school include NBA players Jordan Clarkson and Andre Robertson and one woman National Basketball Association player, Kiana Williams. Fantastic. Uh, good to see these kids out here again today. Uh, again, if you're just now tuning in or if you're a longtime watcher of our parade coverage, uh, again, this really, let's kind of set the scene for people that maybe are, are watching from somewhere for the first time. This is kind of like Mardi Gras for us, maybe on steroids. Um, <laughs> how uh, You're from here, Steph. I've lived here off and on for a long time, but you're from here. How would you describe to people who, who are not from here, how would you describe Fiesta Week to people? Uh, the biggest party party in town uh you know there's something for everybody maybe not everyone likes large large crowds there's all kinds of fiesta of events for everyone and you know uh it's very community involved because you know your your kid your neighbor's kid could be marching in the parade absolutely so you're going to see a lot of floral a lot of bright colors you see the fiesta medals and another jrotc group this is from alamo heights high school the mule battalion that's right they are led by lieutenant colonel victor m diaz jr senior army instructor uh, they are about 90 cadets. They were awarded with an honor unit with distinction over 10 consecutive years. If that sounds a little tricky, it is. <laughs> and it's a hard goal to keep, but they do it well down there in Alamo Heights, not too far from downtown San Antonio. They also boast 10-time national champion and female color guard. Leadership team is a three-time national finalist and two-time national finalist in Cyber Patriot. Cyber Patriot is a national youth cyber education program created by the Air Force Association to inspire kinder through 12th grade students towards careers in cybersecurity and other science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You can see the Alamo Heights colors there, that kind of royal blue and gold of Alamo Heights High School. I tell you what, beautiful day here in South Texas. It, a while ago, this parade used to be held in the afternoon. Oh, yes. And I tell you what, the April heat and humidity can be brutal sometimes. So for years ago, they decided to make a strategic shift and now it's held earlier in the day. Thank goodness, because a lot of these people are wearing uh, uniforms uh, with long sleeves, hats, and then, of course, we've got the, uh, the the gowns. Yes, it can get hot very quick. We're, we're looking at Brackenridge High School. They're coming through right now, and their coordinator is Sergeant Major, retired, Walden C. McAllister. Yeah, this is the Mighty Eagle Battalion, a U.S. Army JROTC unit from uh, Brackenridge High School. They have been in the parade for about 25 years. Moving on, we've got Holmes High School. That's right, Holmes High High School, O.W. Holmes. We have participant Sarah White sponsor and the Friday Night Lights. This unit has completed the Cyber Patriot National or semifinals five times from 2015 to 2020. And the Texas 781st is a two-time recipient of the Outstanding Unit Award there at Holmes High School here in San Antonio. That's right. Unit is a go team as they have been personally requested by Senator John Cornyn to provide honor guard duty in the State Academy send-off program. This next group has a banner, but they're walk they're, this is Johnson. Johnson. Okay, Johnson High School. There you go. It was a little tricky to see because they're walking at a pretty good clip, so the banner is kind of leaning backwards. That's right. Claudia Taylor, Lady Bird Johnson High School. They are with the Junior ROTC. And then participants, we have Thomas Groggett, sponsor, and the Jaguar Battalion. This is school's fourth year to participate in the parade. Battalion Commander Ava Calbillo was named Northeast ISD Cadet of the Year for the 2021-2022 school year. Looks like they're preparing a little drill, drill for us here. Good men 
yeah. the beginning there with the, uh, the the rifle drill. Thank you very much for the students there at Johnson High School, part of the Lady Bird uh, Johnson Army JROTC unit here in San Antonio. The Battle of Flowers. We're just getting started, Steph. We've got a long long way to go and thank you to everybody watching us not only here in in san antonio but south texas and all around the world on all of our platforms here at ksat 12. it's truly an honor to be back and i tell you what last year felt a little more real coming out of the pandemic this year feels totally normal to me it does it does like it's like we're, we're in we're in the spirit we're already i don't want to say routine right but we we know what to expect and we we're expecting a big party and it's it's already here um i love the crowd thank you guys for coming up to say hi <laughs> we are at six and at avenue e and oh we have we have oh yes we have our battle of flowers ladies so this is an interesting parade. This is all women-led, all volunteers, the Battle of Flowers Association with their beautiful yellow dresses and their beautiful yellow hats. So if you see them walking around, you may want to say hi and thank you because they are responsible for putting this all together. That's right, and you, you can't miss them. They're all wearing that beautiful kind of canary yellow, and we've seen them throughout the crowd this morning as we gear up to this. Uh, it is, again, a massive parade with tens of thousands of, uh, of spectators, and the planning for this begins tomorrow. Exactly. I, I mean, it takes the whole year to get this planned out for the next year, the logistics of which are changing all the way up to the very last second. Uh, you know, we, we actually got some changes, you know, this morning, first thing. So we're going with it, but uh, so far so good here for the Vanguard, and uh, people are appear to be standing by waiting for the, the big, big show, which is, of course, uh, is the parade floats and the gowns and the ladies showing us their, their shoes. shoes. Yes, and the marching bands as well. So we have a lot to share with you coming up. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment. The inaugural Battle of Flowers Parade in 1891 was originally scheduled to welcome which U.S. president? Was it A, James Garfield, B, Grover Cleveland, or C, Benjamin Harrison? The answer, after the break. <laughs> 